Hey girl, it's Ryan Morrell, and girl, in today's video, I will be showing you what is in my MacBook. I haven't done this video in a hot minute. I think the last time I did this video, or the first time I did this video was two years ago, and I wanted to film an updated one because the apps that I've been using have definitely changed a bit. And just an FYI, in case you guys are wondering, for this whole back to school series, back to school months from June to August, I will be posting a lot of tech related videos. So a lot of videos about gadgets and apps. And that's because I know that a lot of us are entering the new school school year digitally, um, which is why, again, I'll be uploading a lot of online digital tech related videos. Just an FYI in case you guys might be confused and you're like, why is she suddenly posting so many like tech videos? That's why. Before I begin, if you've not yet subscribed to this channel, I would love for you to be part of our little family. So make sure to hit that subscribe button down below and the little bell next to it to get notified every single time I post a video Saturday 2 p.m. So this is my desktop over here, a little plug. If you guys wanna learn how to customize your MacBook, customize your desktop, I made a video on that a few weeks ago. If you haven't seen that, I'll link a, a link a link to that. No, I'll leave a link to that down below or click this iCard over here if you wanna learn how to customize your MacBook. So yeah, this is what my desktop looks like. A little change though, if you watched my, again, how to customize your MacBook video, I did have a little calendar insert from an app called Deja Desktop. I'll show you over here. I told you guys in that video that I had issues with it before, but it was now working fine. Literally a few days after I filmed that video, it started not working fine. I don't really recommend that app anymore just because it hasn't been the most reliable. So for now, that app is gone. Deja Desktop no more. So if you guys see over here, this is where I keep all of my folders. So I like to keep these five folders on my desktop because I constantly access these folders so I have my YouTube folder this is where I keep all the music that I use the effects that I use my uploads my thumbnails all my Photoshop files for graphics and thumbnails and all that then I have my Instagram folder this is where I dump all of the pictures that I take for Instagram because girl you know you know that one selfie is the product of 50 selfies so I put all of those photos in this folder and then I choose which one I want to post on Instagram next is school and usually this is where I put just the books so I have a different folder for the documents but this is where I put all the online books right now I only have one next we have my recent folder and this is where I dump everything that I'm too lazy to organize so as you can see my desktop is very clean there's no like files lying around because I get really stressed when I have a messy desktop so you know if I screenshot something or if I suddenly have you know files on my desktop I immediately drag them and put them into my recent folder and then when I'm ready in the mood to organize then I'll open this folder up and then put all the files in their respective folders I also use a sticky notes app quite a lot this is where I put just like really important deadlines usually if it involves another person <laughs> usually for meetings or if I have to submit a video to someone then I'll put that deadline here because you know it's not professional to keep people waiting okay so now on to the actual app so we're gonna start with my dock and then we're gonna go into my launch pad so when you first get your MacBook usually they fill it with like a bunch of apps on the dock I get rid of those and I only put apps that I actually use Okay, so for my dock, the way I organize it, the apps that I use more, I put on the right side because that's where my hand gravitates towards. So we're gonna go from right to left. First, we have system preferences, which is the settings. Next, we have VLC. I use this app whenever I wanna play a video because when you play videos, you can either choose to use VLC or QuickTime, but I find that VLC supports more video formats, which is why I prefer using that. So whenever I wanna watch a video, I just drag it to VLC and then play it there. Next we have Final Cut Pro. So Final Cut Pro is what I use to edit. Definitely recommend it. It is an investment. I think it's around maybe like 14k but it is a one-time payment and if you're planning on editing videos a lot, if you're a YouTuber or you're a film student or you just like editing videos, then Final Cut Pro is a really really great investment. I prefer it over iMovie and Premiere Pro because it is much 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 more user-friendly than Premiere Pro and Compared to iMovie, there are just so many more edits you can do and I edit way, way quicker on Final Cut Pro. 
Next, we have Adobe Photoshop and Adobe Lightroom. Actually, I'm gonna just mention all the Adobe apps I have already. So I have Adobe Photoshop, Adobe Lightroom, we'll jump over here. I have Adobe Media Encoder and Adobe After Effects. I definitely recommend the Adobe Bundle as well. It is quite expensive compared to Final Cut Pro. It is a subscription, so you need to pay for it every single month. But I definitely think it's worth it if you are someone who is really passionate about anything digital, you know, whether it's video editing, video production, you know, graphic design, illustrating, animation. If that is something that you see yourself doing a lot, if that's something you want to excel in, then I definitely think that the Adobe bundle is worth it. And I say Adobe bundle because I think that is way more worth it than subscribing to individual apps. So Photoshop I use to make my thumbnails. If I have maybe like a few projects where I need to create like a poster or some kind of graphic design, then I'll use Photoshop. Next, Lightroom. Lightroom I use to edit my photos, edit my thumbnails. There is a mobile version which is honestly like good enough like if you plan on subscribing to just Lightroom I would say just keep your money because the mobile app works really really great there are just like a few more additional features for the desktop app but it's not worth the subscription so the only reason why I have it is because it comes with a bundle anyway so might as well you know Adobe After Effects is what I use to make the the handwriting thing in my intro yep I use Adobe After Effects to make that and I use Adobe Media Encoder to export whatever I made in Adobe After Effects. I don't really know why you need a separate app to export it, but you do, so that's why I have it. Next, I have Google Chrome, which is my primary, what do you call this, internet browsing app? <laughs> So I use Google Chrome. I barely use Safari. I just have it here just in case Google Chrome fails, but I use Google Chrome like 99.9% .9 of the time because it is so much more customizable. You know, there's so many extensions you can add to it. And if you want to learn more about must have Google Chrome extensions, I did make a video on that, which I will also link down below or just click this card over here. Next we have Spotify. So Spotify is great. I love Spotify. I only realized this recently, but if you subscribe to Spotify Premium, you can actually download the songs into your MacBook, which I didn't know. I only found out recently, but yeah, if you guys didn't know, then that's a tip. <laughs> okay, that probably sounds really dumb because the reason you subscribe to Spotify Premium is to be able to listen to songs offline, but basically, I thought you could only do that on your phone, sort of like Netflix, but um, yeah. <laughs> So yeah, Spotify I use all the time. Photos I actually don't use because I prefer storing my photos in Finder because then it's easier for me to transfer it to my hard drive. So photos is empty for me. Actually, why do I even have it here? Next we have I Procrastinate, which is my favorite planner, digital planner. But in my last video, I got so many comments about, oh, like I can't find I Procrastinate. And I realized that they phased it out or at least it's no longer available in the Philippines. I don't know why, if you're from the US or from another country, try to search it up in the App Store. Actually, no, I don't think it's in the App Store. I think it's you have to search it up on Google. But it's no longer available in the Philippines, which is really sad. The only reason why I have it is because I've had this ever since I was in middle school. So ever since like, what, 2012? <laughs> 2012 so back then it was available so i'm sorry but if you know someone who has it just tell them to airdrop it to you next we have notes so notes i actually use quite often i started dream journaling if you guys watched my where did i mention it in one of my videos, I mentioned that I started dream journaling and I do it on the notes app. So I use that quite often. Next we have Zotero and oh my gosh, I can't believe I only found out about this last semester. And I can't believe I've only had one prof recommend this, but basically it cites things for you. So you don't have to go to EasyBib or Citation Machine to cite your journal articles. Zotero just makes it so, so, so much easier for you because you can literally cite things just with one click. So I definitely recommend Zotero. Next I have iMovie. So iMovie is an OG. I started editing using iMovie. The only reason I have it now is because there's this thing, really annoying thing with the new iPhones where whenever you record a video and edit it on Final Cut, you will get random glitches. And I've seen it in so many, in so many YouTubers videos, suddenly it'll glitch and I'll be like, you use the new iPhone to film that, huh? <laughs> 
<laughs> so I found out that the way to prevent that glitching is to first edit them on iMovie. It is a process, but yeah, you gotta do what you gotta do to get rid of the glitch. By the way, this is all just a theory of mine. I don't know for a fact that it's the new iPhones that caused the glitch, but based on my observations, that's what I've come to believe. And the whole edit the clips first on iMovie to get rid of the glitch is just something I found out through trial and error. So yeah. This is just a Raya approved, but not necessarily Apple approved hack. Next we have QuickTime, and QuickTime is what I use to screen record. That's really the only reason why I use it. What you're seeing right now, this was all screen recorded by QuickTime. So thank you, QuickTime. Next is Stickies, which I talked about already. Next is Preview, and this is what I use to view documents. I think there are definitely a lot of apps out there to view documents, view PDFs, view photos, but I stick with Preview because it comes with a Mac already. Also, a big reason why I love Preview is because it's so easy to add your signature to documents. So if you're constantly signing contracts or having to sign PDFs digitally, this is great for that. <laughs> Next, we have the App Store, Calculator, Calendar, Launchpad, Finder. Basic, basic things. Now let's go into my Launchpad because there are a few apps that I have that aren't on my dock, but I still use. For the basic apps, I'm just going to run through them. We have Calendar, Find My for, you know, locating your iPhone, any Apple device. Reminders I don't use. I prefer reminders on my phone. We have notes, photos, photo booth. Photo booth I never use. I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand. Comment down below if you get that reference. <laughs> um, I don't understand why so many like people use photo booth and like post them on Instagram. And for some reason, they look good. Because whenever I use photo booth, girl, like I look like shiz. And it's so, so, so grainy. I don't understand how people make it work, but I never, ever, ever use photo booth. Voice memos, I don't use either. I use it on my phone. We have mail, messages, Viber. I use Viber a lot because that's where our family chat is. So I use that a lot. FaceTime, Skype. Girl, I don't know why I have Skype here. I haven't used Skype since middle school. I remember back in middle school, like Skype was the biggest thing. Like I would Skype every single day. Like every single day, as soon as I got home from school, I'd turn on Skype and just video chat until I fell asleep. But I haven't done that in years, so I think I should delete Skype. Do people still use Skype? I don't know. We have music. I actually stopped using iTunes when I got Spotify. And I only got Spotify like november last year yeah like i'm super late to the spotify trend then we have preview app store safari google chrome books i have a bunch of books do i read them not as often as i'd like next we have the dictionary which is super helpful because whenever i'm reading an article and there's a word that i don't know you just right click and it gives you the definition the beauty of technology next we have the calculator again vlc imovie final cut pro all my Adobe apps, stickies, I procrastinate. Then we have the menu bar, the glorious menu bar. This actually hasn't changed. Like I still use the same menu bar apps. So first we have Mia for Gmail. Mia and ManyTab are so convenient because when you click it, you get a mini window of your Gmail account. So you can quickly see like if you have a new notification and you can see who that email is from and you can decide if you wanna to respond to it or just ignore them for a little bit, you know? Same with many tab. If you click it, you get a small window of your Facebook feed and your Facebook messages. These two apps are really great when you are focusing on studying or researching or just doing some work and you get a notification. You just want to see who it's from. You know, you don't really want to respond. These apps are great for that because they just show you who it is and you can be like, okay, not important. Keep working. <laughs> Next is Flux and Flux basically warms your screen. It's super important if you're someone who works a lot at night. This is great because it warms your screen a lot so it's much gentler on your eyes. Next is Copy Clip which is great for research because it basically keeps a record of like the last 20 things you've copied. Next we have the Apple Documents which I have never used. So we have Numbers, Keynote, Pages which is basically just Google Sheets, Google Slides, and Google Docs. <laughs> then we also have Microsoft Office so I don't use these at all, but professors' handouts or resources are usually in Microsoft Office format. So I have these apps so I can open those. So we have Microsoft Word, PowerPoint, Excel, OneNote. You do have to pay for these, but 
Most schools, most high schools, most universities offer this for free. So just go to your IT department and ask for it. I got mine from my high school. And here we have other, which are all of the apps that I never, ever, ever use. We have like GarageBand. Yeah, so I'm not gonna read through these because I don't know what most of them are for and that would take a lot of time and that would just bore you. I also have IBM here, which is um, an application for psychological statistics. We use it in my freshman year and I'm pretty sure it's pretty expensive. So I just keep it because I got it for free. The psych department just installed it on my laptop. So I just keep it here just in case, you know, just in case I need it in the future. So that is it for today's video. That is everything in my MacBook. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a thing or two. If you did, make sure to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Bye girl. Thank <laughs> you.